Welcome to Worthwhile Watches. I'm Rob. Today we're going to look at a great looking and highly capable dive watch with a rich history. But is it a worthwhile watch to add to your collection? Let's find out. The Seiko SPB143 is a modern dive watch in Seiko's Prospex line. It was inspired by Seiko's first professional dive watch, the 62 Mass, which was released in 1965. The letters MAS in the name are actually taken from Seiko Matic Self Dater, which seems a bit random. I mean, why not 62 mats? Or 62 myself? Or 62 mater? I actually kind of like the sound of that one. Anyway, the original 62 mass had a water resistance rating of 150 meters, and like this modern counterpart, it had a rotating bezel and a date window at 3 o'clock. The SPB143 is a bit larger than the original's 37mm case size, and features the contemporary specs, materials, and capabilities that modern divers and watch enthusiasts expect. Seiko has released several different versions of this watch with various colors and dial patterns, and the SJE093, which is a very close and much more expensive recreation of the original 62 mass. But today, we're focusing on the SPB143. The case of the SPB143 measures 40.5 millimeters. The bezel is 40 millimeters. I measure the height, including the domed crystal, at about 13.5 millimeters. Lug width is 20 millimeters. And the lug to lug is right at about 47 millimeters. But the male end links will push that out to 52 millimeters. The case does have some curvature and those end links do turn down quite dramatically, so this watch should still fit quite well on smaller wrists. Here it is on my 6.75 inch wrist, and it fits very well. The case also features drilled lugs, so if you did want to swap this out for a strap, it shouldn't be too difficult. And the weight sized for me is 165.4 grams. The case is 316L stainless steel, and it's nicely contoured with brushed top and side surfaces, and some polished edges here on the top and bottom, and that bottom polished edge is also rounded off quite nicely. The case back is solid, and features a polished great wave in the center. The crown is nice and grippy and operates smoothly. And yes, it is unsigned. But that doesn't bother me at all. And thanks to that screw down case back and crown, this watch is rated for 200 meters of water resistance and it does meet ISO 6425 standards. The bezel on the SPB143 has a coin edge that offers plenty of grip. The bezel insert is a black coated brushed stainless steel. It has numbers at each 10 minute mark and batons in between at the fives. As someone who frequently uses my timing bezels, I do appreciate having the minute markers all the way around. At 12 o'clock, there's a triangle with an embedded loom pip. The bezel action is quite good with minimal back play. It offers enough resistance to stay in place without being too stiff or too light when turning it. And it does have that sort of softer clicks that a lot of Seiko bezels have. And mine lines up pretty well. This watch has a nice slightly domed sapphire crystal with an inner AR coating. It offers a nice clear view of the time, and there's some nice distortion when viewing at an angle. Okay, let's talk about the dial. 
This model has a nice gray sunburst dial that appears somewhat subtle indoors, but can be very dramatic in sunlight. I do find sunburst dials fascinating to look at. That radial sheen spinning around the dial can be quite mesmerizing. It's like a pinwheel. or an infinite spiral, or a galaxy, man. Whoa, wait, what time is it? Okay, back to the dial. All the text printing is sharp and crisp. The applied baton indices are nice and wide with polished surrounds, allowing for good legibility, and there's generous loom applied on these indices. The hands on this watch are bold and purposeful, but refined. The half brushed, half polished finish on the hour and minute hands helps ensure visibility in just about every lighting condition. The seconds hand is nicely proportioned with a loom filled paddle on the end. The date window is simple and unframed, but it's well positioned and balances the opposing 9 o'clock index nicely. Beating away inside this watch is the Seiko 6R35 movement. It's an automatic movement with hacking, hand winding, and a 70 hour power reserve. Now this particular watch when I first got it was running about minus 10 seconds per day out of the box. But after owning it for a couple of months, I finally decided to get a time grapher and try to regulate it myself. It took a couple tries, but I did manage to regulate it, and now it is running pretty close to zero seconds per day, uh, give or take maybe one second per day. So I'm very pleased with the consistency of this movement. The bracelet on this watch is stainless steel, and it is a step above the typical Seiko bracelet. It has good articulation, solid links and end links. It has a fold over push button clasp with nice milled internals and four micro adjust holes and a diver's extension. The top surface of each link is brushed and the edges are polished. The bracelet also has Seiko's DiaShield hardness coating which in my opinion has been holding up very well. I wear this watch pretty regularly and in about two years, it uh, barely has any scratches on the bracelet. So I think it's holding up nicely. As far as possible negatives for the bracelet, it is a little bit chunky and heavy and it does use the dreaded pin and collar system to adjust the bracelet. <gasps> Another potential negative is the clasp and extension combined make for a pretty long section of bracelet here that goes on the underside of your wrist, but that also helps to balance the head of the watch. So I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing, but it is quite long. Overall, this bracelet is very high quality, sturdy, and quite comfortable to wear all day in my opinion. The watch could also easily be put on a strap because of those drilled lugs. One small detail that could probably be a little bit better refined is the case to bracelet fit. You can see that the contour of the end link doesn't quite match the contour of the case. I don't really mind this very much, but when compared to other similar watches, it does look a bit strange. But it doesn't affect performance and isn't something I really notice while wearing it. Being a dive watch, it does wear a little bit chunky, but I wouldn't say excessively so. The case design and curvature and reasonable thickness help it settle quite low onto the wrist. The weight is well distributed and balanced between the bracelet and the head of the watch. The 40.5 millimeter case doesn't take up a huge amount of wrist real estate but the male end links might give small wrists some trouble if wearing it on a bracelet. I find it wears relatively unobtrusively for such a sturdy watch. It looks great and it's highly legible in almost all conditions. 
Seiko is known for having good loom, and this watch is no exception. Seiko has applied their Lumi Bright generously to the hands, indexes, and the bezel pip. When transitioning out of bright light, the loom glows a strong green, and it has staying power too. Here's how the loom performs over a 20 minute test. After the full 20 minutes, it's still clearly visible. Overall, the loom is excellent. So is this a worthwhile watch? Does this Seiko deserve a slot in your watch box? What makes this watch slot worthy? It's a very wearable size at just over 40 millimeters. It has good specs and build quality. It has an upgraded movement with a better stated accuracy range and significantly more power reserve. It has a high quality bracelet that is a step up from many Seikos. It has sapphire crystal. It has very good loom. And it's based on a classic design and looks great. And what might make this watch not worthy? The bracelet may be a bit chunky for some. The male end links might be an issue for smaller wrists. The end links don't exactly match the contours of the case. And the price is higher than a lot of Seiko divers. So there you go. Is it a worthwhile watch? Well, after owning this watch for over two years, I can say it's definitely been a worthwhile addition to my collection. But let me know your opinions in the comments. And I'll see you next time. Until then, no matter what you have on your wrist, make your day worthwhile.